There are a number of books and articles that are written on the Battle of Palmetto Ranch. If you're interested, check those out. You will learn a little bit more about, about this engagement. And I will remind you as you watch this, if you see the buckets wandering around with the orange pennants, the bicycle flags, drop a dollar, five dollars into that, and that will go a long way toward paying the bills and creating a wonderful event for you next year. Look at the pile of Zawabs over there in their red trousers. It looks like that unit was almost sacrificed. Indeed, there were two companies of the 34th Indiana, Company B and Company D, that were sacrificed in this battle. There would be courts of inquiry after this battle. All the officers were called in and some of the NCOs and were interrogated by higher ranking officers as to what happened here. Remember, Lee's army had surrendered five weeks before. This engagement shouldn't have even been fought. Uh, we see the Federal starting to fall back a little. Confederates reconsolidating, guiding on that Texas flag, that Lone Star flag. Those cavalrymen up to the north end of the field, it looks from here as though most of them are carrying carbines. Maybe, they're, maybe they have rifles in, in their hands, the muskets. It is affirmative, they have carbines in their hands and firing away. Now we see the Confederate cavalry to the rear. We see a Confederate helping a companion off the field who has been wounded. We see some medical, medical staff starting to move out on the field and then they turned around to retreat because probably the mini balls were following too hot, falling too hotly there. You can see this federal skirmish line directly in front of us. These Confederates continue to move. Confederate artillery is still off in the distance under the trees. Federal commander having his move, men move to the north or the northeast. There's that old rebel yell. You can hear those boys screaming like a bunch of Indians. The colors are held high. Almost point blank here. Tough to miss anybody. Oh, soldiers going down, right and left, in both lines. One Confederate's gun just misfired. He aimed, pulled the trigger, and nothing happened. Uh, Confederates continuing to extend their line to the south. You can see how this is an enveloping movement. There's some Confederate artillery. Confederates still falling in, or moving in, and the Federals falling back. Oh, another Union boy just hit the dust. Confederate cavalry to the north. This became a almost a running retreat on the part of the northerners. They would run for seven miles with the Confederates pursuing them. The Confederate horses eventually will break down and the artillery horses will break down uh, and the Federals will make it almost back to their garrison where they will have reinforcements and they will set up a battle line. The 62nd USCT would go out and form up first, then another USCT unit, uh, the 82nd, would come out to support them. Finally, those uh, 34th Indiana boys would seek cover and find, uh, find their way back to the garrison. The Confederates know they have just won and they've whipped the Yankees, and they're giving a big cheer to their men. Great victory.